It's not a very debatable topic when people say that the internet has infiltrated practically every aspect of human life. The internet is everywhere, zooming around us, passing through us, teaching us, and more interestingly enough, changing us as beings. Astral projection has been a part of human culture and mythology ever since humans first began living on planet Earth. Different ancient cultures have drawn different pictures of aliens and UFOs on cave walls and all over the planet, independent of each other's stories and myths. Recent developments in certain areas of fringe science tell us that it's possible that alien abductions and astral projection are inseparable experiences. That alien abduction is only possible through an altered state of consciousness, like astral projection. Although most people nowadays, due to the internet, know at least something about what astral projection is. It is still clouded within myth and confusion. How have humans, from indigenous tribes to iPad addicted first graders, experienced this phenomenon without hearing stories of it previously? It is very hard to deny that astral projection is anything less than a very real and natural experience. In 1968, Charles T. Tart did an experiment on a woman who claimed to have an out-of-body experience every night when she slept. Over a period of four nights, he conducted this experiment and found that during astral projection sessions, the participant reported leaving her body, floating above her bed, and being able to read a five-digit number placed overhead out of her sight. The five-digit number matched the one written down by the psychologist. Although this experiment had been picked apart many times, it is still fairly conclusive based on the results of the experiment that an out-of-body experience could very well be the cause if ruling out telepathy. Astral projection has been conducted many times, almost all with shocking and seemingly conclusive results. Like many metaphysical topics, however, it is hard to prove anything completely. But I don't have to rely on these experiments, because I experience out-of-body phenomenons fairly often. Now, Back to the interwebs. Astral projection is when you lay in your bed and your soul or astral body leaves your physical body and is able to explore the world free from physical restraints. You could see the Great Wall of China, check on your boyfriend or girlfriend to see if they're cheating on you and accidentally catch your best friend masturbating when she thinks that no one is watching. Kind of creepy, right? And anyone can do it at any time. With all of these things you can do, it seems like no one in their right mind would waste such potential for fun by spending their out-of-body experience surfing the internet. But that's what I did. And that is what my story is about. I woke up in the night with a tingly feeling over my body and a loud humming in my ears. I felt alert and awake and full of energy. Without thinking, I got up and went to my computer. But my computer wasn't my laptop. It was an old monitor with a rounded glass screen. I realise now that it was the archetype of the computer. I guess the collective unconscious of people visualise a computer as an old Windows machine. I looked back at my bed, and yes, like I thought, I was astral projecting because I touched the mouse and the screen lit up, revealing an old, cluttered desktop with a green background. The OS looked like a mix of Windows and Mac OS, which I thought was very cool. During astral projection, you are fully conscious, and some report the dream to be even more vivid than real life. Usually, everything isn't the same as the real world. Experts in the field believe the astral realm exists all around us as a kind of fourth dimension. 
invisible, yet very real, existing as an energetic copy of everything in our world. There were strange programs on the desktop. Some looked like old prototypes of programs like Microsoft Word or GarageBand. Some of the icons that had never been designed showed a small square photo with a skull and small blocky words underneath it that said, no icon. I clicked on the Internet Explorer one and a black box popped up and displayed a white loading bar. Do you remember going on the internet on phones before smartphones were around? And how all the pages were simplified into blocks of text and images? That's what this looked like. An old cell phone's internet rendering skills. The tail of the mouse pointer dragged for a very long time, leaving a slow streak of white flowing every moment. It seemed like everything in the computer was being played in blurry slow motion and looked very eerie. Everything was black, green and grey. I clicked on the search bar and a list of popular websites came up. I clicked Google and it took me to the page. But the word Google wasn't in colourful letters. It was just black Helvetica that said Google very plainly. I clicked on the search bar and it flashed black and nothing happened. I tried to type and no letters appeared. So I went to the above search bar and tried to type again. Nothing happened. So I guess you can't type anything in Astral Google. It kind of blocks you for some reason. I looked at the list of popular sites and clicked one that said HTTPS dot slash slash graveyard twitter dot com. It took me to a page that looked like Twitter, but there were no background images and the bird in the upper corner looked like an emoticon bird and everything was typed in white blocky text against a black background. I saw a list of celebrity usernames and then to the right, shockingly enough, my username. I clicked it and it brought me to my Twitter page, but my profile photo was a very low resolution image of an eye. Very strange, very creepy. The eye was looking straight at me. I scrolled down the page and recognised every tweet, but none that I'd actually ever tweeted. Then I realised each tweet was something that I had meant to tweet about, but forgot or then decided against it. Somehow, it had been sent here. I clicked on my photos and blurred grey dot gif images labelled with pixelated numbers. Each one was geolocated to the place I had posted it, even though I always make sure geolocation is disabled on my phone and computer. I randomly clicked another link and was reminded of the No Sleep Shadow Web story, because what it displayed was a pixelated video of someone making cuts on their arms with a knife, and beneath the video people were typing things like, deeper, cut the vein and just end it. I felt sick and scared, and I went to click the X button, but my mouse glitched, and made me click the next cam button below it. What I saw still freaked me out. I saw a man's wrist tied up to a chair, palms down. The camera was right up to the man's hand, and another person was using needle nose pliers to rip and pull the man's fingernails off. A loud screaming sound suddenly boomed out the computer's outdated speaker system, making my ears hurt and my heart leap into my throat. My blood pressure was sky high, and the man on the screen continued to pull the fingernails back. What I make of this is that the shadow web, being such a dark place, had made a permanent mark on the internet's archetype and exists there, and freaks who can astral project go to view it in their sleep. I pressed the print screen button and copied it to the paint program and printed it out. I wasn't thinking that this won't actually print, and not in the real world. I was thinking that I had to show this to the police. 
I was too freaked out to think about how logical this was. The printer did its thing, and I went to press the monitor power button to try and wake up from this. But then I saw a folder on the desktop labelled Humanity. Its icon looked different to the others, newer. I clicked on it, and found many folders with names. It was almost like it had named everyone ever born. I clicked the first letters of my name on the keyboard, but the screen flashed black, like it did before. So I scrolled down until I hit my name. There are about 20 entries, so I expanded the date created tab, and found the one with my birth date on it. I clicked on it. It wouldn't open. No matter what I did, it wouldn't, and the screen just flashed black every time I did. So I decided to look at my grandpa's folder. He had died years before. So I scrolled down and found him. And as soon as his folder opened, a video of him popped up on the screen, and he was crying and shaking and yelling. The sound from the speakers was terrifying. It sounded like a mix between a computer glitching out, an air horn, and a human screaming. I couldn't have exited the tab fast enough. I sat there crying and shaking, wondering why that happened. I soon got up the nerve and clicked on another random person's folder. All it showed was a picture, as if taken from their webcam, of them calmly surfing the web. In the folder there was a text file, and when I opened it, it had info about them, where they were born, and when, and under death, there was nothing. I decided to see what would happen if I clicked on someone else who was already dead. So I put in Albert Einstein's name, and immediately, a video of Albert Einstein himself, screaming and shaking violently with his eyes bulging out of his head and his mouth wide open came up. I closed it quietly and realised that everyone who was dead had a .mov file in their folder instead of a picture. For some reason, an image I had seen on Tumblr popped in my mind. It was a picture that said, What would the world look like if we could see internet and radio transmission waves? Or something like that. And there was grey fuzz lines through everything. And somehow, I made the connection. That because of the waves from Wi-Fi and radio and cell phones, when we die, they surround and torture us because they penetrate the astral world as well as the physical one. I turned off the monitor and buried my head in my hands and told myself to wake up. And suddenly I did, in my own bed. It was about three in the morning. I was shaking all over and my mouth had that all too familiar watery feeling taste and I immediately vomited all over my blankets. I was scared walking through my house. I felt like something was there with me, and everything I saw was racing through my head. I didn't sleep at night, and the buzzing and screaming sounds were all I could hear. The thing that horrifies me the most is that the next morning I saw a piece of paper face down in the printer. I picked it up. It was the photo I printed only completely grey with faint lines running through it, and my laptop computer was extremely hot. I truly believe in astral projection now, and ever since, I've been researching it like crazy. Most of the time I'm too afraid to sleep, because I don't want to astral project again. I don't know what caused me to think that radio waves and Wi-Fi can actually torment our souls when we die, but every time I see a cell phone, I imagine data waves floating out of it, and what if it's true? Why would everyone who had died been screaming? With everything good the internet has brought us, I keep thinking, what if there's something darker about it? Something evil about it on the metaphysical level? What if humans were never meant to get this far technologically? What if we were never meant to get this advanced? I never want to astral project again.